nerves. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, for this story today, we decided to take a walk to the pond by our house because that seems like an appropriate spot to tell the story of Heracles and the Lernian Hydra, also just known as the Hydra or the Hydra of Lerna. So in the last story, Heracles completed the first of his labors, the Nemean lion, and he killed this giant man-eating lion with impenetrable skin by crushing it to death in his arms. And then he skinned the lion with its own claws and wore that cloak like armor with the lion's head pulled over his own like a helmet. And that lion was one of the children of Echidna. And this new monster that he's going to be facing in this story is also another child of Echidna and Typhon. So, when Heracles got back and Eurystheus hid in the vase, because that's what he does when Heracles comes back looking all scary with a lion skin on him, he, had, he did not expect Heracles to come back alive. He and Hera utterly expected that that lion was going to kill Heracles. And so they had to scramble to come up with an even more difficult, even more dangerous labor if they were going to get Heracles killed. And for that, they chose the Hydra. Because there was a swamp near the Lake of Lerna. And in that swamp, nothing could live. There were no fish in the water, no frogs on the lily pads, no squirrels in the trees, no birds flying above them. Because in that swamp lived the Hydra. And it was a water serpent. It was a water monster. And its breath was so poisonous that it slowly poisoned all the air of the swamp. Hi. Hello. It slowly poisoned the air of the swamp to the point where even a bird flying over the swamp would fall dead from the sky. And now Heracles was told that he had to travel to Lerna and slay this monster. And so he did. And he set off in his chariot for Lerna, and he took with him his nephew, Aeolus. And Aeolus was of the same lineage as he was. And so Aeolus himself was a hero. But Aeolus was younger than Heracles and made for a good assistant. Made for a good, uh, you know, charioteer while Heracles traveled. And so they reached the swamp outside of Lerna, and they set camp. And Aeolus cooked dinner while Heracles got, you know, some rest. And then Heracles woke up in the morning, grabbed his sharp sword, walked up just outside the edge of the swamp, and took a deep breath. <gasps> Take a deep breath. <gasps> and he held that breath. And then he charged into the swamp, hunting for the hydra. And he held his breath because he knew that even he, as powerful as he was, would be poisoned by the Hydra's breath. And he didn't have to hunt very long for the Hydra because the Hydra came hunting for him. <laughs> and the Hydra, sure enough, came slithering through the water of the swamp. Giant ripples in its wake because it was a huge serpent. And Heracles braced himself, drew his sword, and the hydra reared up out of the water and lashed down at Heracles to bite him in its giant fanged mouth. And Heracles snicker-snacked his sword through the air, head fell off into the water, dead snake. So, Heracles like, thinks to himself, that was not nearly as hard as I thought it was going to be. Speared the snake's head on his sword to keep as proof to give to Eurystheus that he had killed the snake, and started to march out of the swamp. <clears throat> and that's when he heard a gurgling and a gurgling and the sound of water sloshing off of a giant snake. He's like, what the what? And he turned and he looked behind him. And what did he see when he looked behind him? The hydra but with two heads. That's right. The hydra was alive and now it had two heads instead of one. And so, it lashed out at him again, and he dodged one head, sliced off the one other one, and then jumped back and sliced off the second one. And where each head had been sliced off, 
two more grew in their place. Now he is fighting a four-headed snake. And this went on for a while. The snake biting at him and slashing at him. And he, he deflected some, some heads with the sword. Some had their teeth bounce off the lion's hide. And every time he sliced off a snake's head, two more grew back. Until finally, Heracles, lungs burning for lack of air. What? Also, he was do dodging the melting spit. <gasps> Yes, thank you. He was also dodging the venom that was dripping from the snake's fangs because its venom was so toxic that it would burn where it hit. And so finally Heracles is facing this hydra and it has by now like 12, 15 heads. He's lost count and he does the only thing he can think of to do. He runs. He leaves the swamp. He runs away, which is not something that Heracles was used to having to do. And so Heracles runs out of the swamp. And Aeolus breathes a sigh of relief, but then he's shocked and he finds out that Heracles didn't succeed. And so they set up camp for the night. And Heracles is upset, and he's worried. How is he going to defeat this monster if every time he cuts its head off, two more grow back in his place? And Aeolus starts cooking dinner, and he serves Heracles, and Heracles doesn't have much of an appetite. And Eolus is doing what many young men will do when there's a campfire. Takes a stick, pokes it in, it catches fire, pulls it out, blows it out, watches the red hot tip glow and smoke curl away, sticks it in, pulls it out, blows out the flame and watches the smoke curl away from the red hot tip, and it gives Heracles an idea. And he smiles widely, and he tells Eolus, eat up and get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow, you go into the swamp with me, and you are going to help me kill this monster. And so, in the morning, they wake up, they eat a good breakfast, and then Aeolus and Heracles prepare two torches. And Aeolus lights each of the torches in the embers of the campfire, and Heracles draws his sword. And they both take a deep breath, and they charge into the swamp. And the hydra comes swarming at him even faster than before this time. And when it comes after them and raises up just gallons of swamp water dripping off of its dozen or more heads. And the heads lash out at Heracles. And he slices off one of the heads and it falls in the ground. The water sizzling and boiling from the venom in its blood. And just as the skin is starting to bubble and two new heads are getting ready to grow, Aeolus lunges in with one of the torches and cauterizes the stump sears the skin so no new heads can grow and then another head comes and Heracles slices that one off and Aeolus sears that one and that one don't bump the camera so it falls out of the tree that would be bad <laughs> and, and Aeolus runs out of breath and he has to run out of the swamp and get a fresh breath of air and run back in and by then, Heracles is still fighting the Hydra, and he's starting to get tired. But they're down to the last handful of heads. And one by one, Heracles slices off each of the heads. And Aeolus sears the stump where each head is cut off. Until the final head is sliced off, and the Hydra falls dead. It's blood pooling in the mud. Now, Aeolus runs immediately out of the swamp. And Heracles stands for a moment and watches the blood empty out of the hydra and watches it bubble and sizzle and he has an idea and he leaves the swamp too and he grabs a wineskin and takes a deep drink of wine and then pours the rest out which confuses Aeolus because Heracles liked wine and what Heracles did was he took that empty wineskin back into the swamp and he took a quiver of arrows you come and knock it out of the tree babe <laughs> He took a quiver of arrows with him, and he dipped the tip of each arrow in that blood. And the blood slimed and coated the tip of each arrow. And then he very carefully filled the wineskin with the rest of the blood. And as he left the swamp, Heracles realized that now he had arrows that were so poisonous that even the tiniest nick from an arrow 
would poison and kill an enemy. And he grabbed a leather sack and he stuffed a bunch of the Hydra heads in the slack and sack and they headed back to Tyrans, to Eurystheus Palace. And they walked into the throne room and Heracles spilled out a dozen or more heads onto the floor of the palace throne room. And Eurystheus screamed a scream of terror and hopped up on his throne and then leaped into the corner and hid in a vase again. And Heracles just laughed. He said, well, cousin, what are you going to do now? The ball is in your court. Except he probably didn't say the ball is in your court because I think that's like an anachronism because I think it's like tennis or something. But anyway, he said something Greekish like that. All right, so now Heracles has finished two of the labors. And the third one will be another child of Echidna. But that will have to wait for next time. So, go for a walk, enjoy some nature, and find a good story. Goodbye! Goodbye. Goodbye. Next time, Her Hercules is going to be fighting a big old pig.